Hi there, I'm Simon Bonner and welcome to this After Effects video tutorial on how to recreate the effects seen in the opening credits of the movie Juno. If you've not seen Juno then you can follow the link I've got up on the screen right now to the website of the company who made the opening credits, a company called Shadow Play, and you can view the opening credits on their website in full. And you can also follow a link they've got there to their Flickr account uh, where they have some uh, behind the scenes uh, photographs and some more information about how they went about creating the effect. Uh, in brief, the way they created the effect was a completely hand uh, handmade workflow. They filmed their actress in front of a green screen and then they printed out each individual frame of the action onto photographic paper, outlined around the actress in black pen before photocopying the photographic frames, uh, sometimes twice, and then colouring in the areas by hand that they wanted to retain colour, cutting the actress out each frame with scissors before scanning the frames back in to the computer and compositing the final result in After Effects. So as you can see, quite a complicated uh, way of doing it, but gave a really great handmade look to the to the opening credits. Looks fantastic, uh, but of course took quite a long time to complete. So if you've got a little bit less time before your next deadline, you want to create something that looks a bit like the opening credit to Juno, then you can follow the method that I uh, lay out here completely within After Effects, and you can get something that approximates, I think, quite closely the look of those opening credits. Also quite handy if you're not very good at colouring in, like me, or like me, you're not allowed near scissors. Say no more, I won't go into that any further. Um, anyway, let's get started. Um, first thing we'll do is drag this raw footage over the Make New Composition icon, and uh, we'll drag this comp out of the Assets folder, and we'll hit Enter on the main keypad to rename this Final. This will be the final comp that we're going to render out. And what this raw footage is, is just our actor in front of a green screen that I've already keyed out and then um, rendered this, uh, rendered the, that footage out as a quick time animation with Alpha Channel built in, so we can just bypass the whole uh, keying process now and just skip right right to the, the effects. So once you've got your raw footage, your keyed footage into the comp, next thing you're going to want to do is to start creating the photocopy look uh, that you see in the opening credits of the movie. And there are probably loads of different ways of doing this. I settled upon one particular way, which I'm going to show you now. If you want to do it a different way, that's fine. You can just pick it up later on. But I'll just show you the way that I decided to do it. First thing we're going to do is um, select the layer in a timeline and hit Control D to duplicate it. I want to start adding some effects. So to the top layer, we're going to first of all add the hue and saturation effect. And we're going to boost the master saturation up to 40. This is just to get as a nice... Um, saturated blue on the shirt because we're going to want to preserve this blue and uh, the more saturated it is the better it's going to look when we're finished up. You'll be happy to know when I get rid of this skin colour we're not going to end up with an actor looking like Paris Hilton. We're going to add the leave colour effect to get rid of these skin tones. We use the eyedropper here to pick the colour of the shirt, the blue, and then set the amount to decolour right up to 100 and get rid of all the skin tones. Next thing we'll do is set the transfer mode of this top layer to overlay. I'll just pull this up so you can see it. There we go. Overlay. And that starts to give us this nice contrasted, um, almost like dirty look. Getting there towards a kind of photocopy look. But of course we've got the skin tones back so we need to use some uh, more effects on this uh, second uh, layer of the, of the raw footage. So the first thing we're going to use is the CC toner effect. And we're going to change these uh, highlight, midtone, and shadow colors. So first of all, we'll set the highlight uh, color to uh, values of 220, <laughs> 2220, 220, 200, and 190, and that gives us a nice, slightly orangey white color. And then we'll set the midtone to uh, kind of uh, light, another sort of light uh, yellow, not quite as light. We'll set this to values of 200. 190, 190, and then we'll set the shadow to a kind of uh, dark grey. Um, you know, imagining perhaps that we have uh, run out of toner in our photocopier, maybe, so we don't have some really, really dark blacks. And this starts to give us a look that approximates the look that we see in the opening credits of the film. And the last thing we'll do is we'll add some grain to the bottom layer, uh, make it look a bit more dirty. We'll uh, set the viewing mode to uh, final output and set the intensity up to 2 so we get a bit more noise and uh, there we go we've got our 
photocopy looking effect. Okay, I think the colorization looks pretty good, but at the moment the frame rate is a bit too high. I think in the opening credits to Juno, the uh, frame rate fluctuates from being quite high, probably around 24, to being quite low. I think probably around 5 frames per second, although I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do for this particular shot is to uh, hit Control K to get my composition settings, and then set the frame rate right, frame rate right down to a value of 5. Okay, and then I'll go to the out point for the, the footage, hit N to trim the work area to this particular position, right click, and then choose trim comp to work area, so we've got no blank frames at the end. I think this looks a lot better now, we've got this kind of jerky look to it, like it like it really has been animated with with a, just a short number of frames, so I quite like the way this looks, so it, I think we can, can carry on now, so we'll uh, hit Control shift c with both of these layers selected, and we'll pre-compose this to uh, affected footage. Okay. And now what we'll do is we'll add the black pen outline that goes around the edge of the actor. So to do that, we'll select the layer in the timeline and hit Control D to duplicate it. We'll rename this layer outline. And then to it, we'll add the fill effect. And set that to a kind of a very dark grey. Then we'll add the simple choker effect. And we'll set this to a value of minus 7. So we've got a nice thin black line around the edge of the actor. And next what we'll do is we'll add the outline, uh, a sort of paper outline around the edge of the actor, as if the actor's been cut out by hand from a piece of paper, as if he's from, from a real photocopy. So um, to do that, we'll duplicate the outline layer, and we'll call the bottom layer paper. And we'll change the fill color to kind of off-white, slightly gray. And we'll change the simple choker value right up to, well, right down to minus 20. And we'll turn off transparency here, we can see what that's looking like. So I think it's looking okay uh, to start with, but I think in order for it to look a lot more realistic, like it really has been cut out with scissors from paper, we need to really roughen these edges. They look a bit too neat. So we'll add the roughen edges effect. And I think what I'll do for this particular shot, though it probably change from shot to shot, uh, what's most suitable, I think I'll set this to a scale of 150, just so it isn't as rough. Um, there's a little bit less roughness around here, so I think that looks a bit better. And the final thing I'll do here, to add a bit of randomness in the size of this paper outline, is to add an expression, a wiggle expression, to the choke map property of the simple choker. So I'll hold down the Alt key, click on the stopwatch, and I'll type wiggle 5 comma 10 and what this wiggle expression will do is five times a second the value of the choke map property will be varied by a uh, value of 10 and uh, what that really means is that this uh, the width of this paper outline will vary from being really thin to really thick so here's a quite a thick value here see if we can find something that looks a bit thinner just really giving the impression here, here we go giving the impression that uh, sometimes when the, the frame is cut out by hand it's cut really close to the edge of the, the outline and sometimes it's cut far away just to give it a more homemade naturalistic uh, look to the footage uh, okay so that's all fine we can now pre-compose all these layers control shift c just so we've um, got them all a bit neat and tidy we don't really need to do this, but I think it's nice to keep it a bit neat and tidy, so we'll call this the actor composition. And now we can start building the background. So uh, if you've seen the opening credits of Juno, then you'll know that sometimes the background is uh, rotoscoped uh, by hand, uh, outline drawings, sometimes it's photocopied, cut out images of trees or houses. So if you want to re replicate what, what, what the opening credits looks like, you might want to add a variation of those. We're just going to do a really quick background. I've got this trees layer that I made earlier, which is just some cut out outlines of trees. Now you might have noticed if you've, if you've watched the opening credits of the movie that a lot of the white paper cutouts have been printed onto uh, graph paper, the kind of squared paper that you might see in a mathematics exercise book. So we're going to try and replicate that look uh, here now on these trees. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is add a new solid layer and uh, make sure it's white. OK, and comp size, and we'll hit OK. And then we'll add to this layer, the grid effect, okay, 
and we will uh, size the grid effect from width and height sliders and we'll set both width and height to a value of 15. We want the border to be a bit thinner so we'll set that to 3 and we'll also set the colour to kind of light olive green so I think values of 150, 170 and 150 look quite good. Okay and then in order to make sure that this grid only appears over the trees and not over the background what we're going to do is duplicate the trees layer, control D, drag it above the white solid and then set the track mat for the white solid to alpha mat and there we go we've done that and the last thing we'll do to this grid is we'll hit T to reveal the opacity property and set it right down to 40% that way I think it looks a little bit more realistic how it would on real paper and also at the same time it allows the black of the trees to uh, sort of show through the grid Okay, next thing we'll do is we'll add the sky and the ground to this uh, background. In the opening credits of the movie, what um, you will have noticed is that a lot of the backgrounds, a lot of the uh, sky and the ground, are made up of single block colours taken from a very small uh, palette of colours. So we're going to do that right now in a similar way. We're going to make a new layer, a new solid layer. And we're going to call this layer sky. And we're going to set the colour to values of 140. 185 and 190 and then we're going to drag this to the bottom of the layer stack then we'll add a new solid layer and we'll call this ground and we'll set this to a colour of 200, 180 and 150 ok and, and again to the bottom of the layer stack and then with the sky layer selected we'll use the pen tool to draw a line through here where, about where the horizon would be Okay, and these are colours that are similar to those that are present in the opening credits of the movie, so I think it's starting to approximate a background that we might see. Now we can bring our actor back, put him on the top of the layer stack, and now we can just add a couple more elements just to finish the background off. We might want to add some clouds, so I'll just bring those in. I made these uh, clouds earlier. Okay, and I'll just put these beneath the actor layer. You might also want to add a bit of looped um, background interest, so in the opening credits the Juno there are a group of runners who run behind the actress on a couple of shots, so we can just um, add those. Uh, what I've done here is uh, filmed the actor running against the green screen and then just taken out a few frames of uh, the looped running at five frames per second, uh, added all the colour effects that we've added to the actor in this shot so it looks like it's kind of photocopied and got the borders and so forth and then rendered the uh, composition out as a PNG sequence uh, with with transparency and uh, we'll just select the, f uh, the first image here make sure we've got PNG sequence selected importing as footage and hit open and then with the runner layer selected in the project panel we can hit control F to get the interpret footage dialog and set the frame rate to 5 frames per second and we'll loop this say 50 times, as many times as you need to um, you know, so it doesn't disappear before your shot is finished, 50 should be fine for this and then we can just drag this layer into the comp just put it in the background here and then towards the beginning of the comp we'll just place him off screen, hit P to reveal the position property and then we'll scrub to near the end of the comp and then we can just drag this guy off to the left so I'm just holding down shift so we can constrain uh, the fact that it's horizontal so we can just keep it in that plane Then I'll just drag this runner behind the actor layer beneath the actor layer and then duplicate it a couple of times just offset the time of it a bit so we've got a group of runners and uh, what I'm definitely not going to do is turn on the uh, motion blur because um, you know if this was composited by hand then we wouldn't have any motion blur so I think it's best to keep that off and uh, we're pretty much done so we can run preview this now okay there's the composition finished hope you've all enjoyed the tutorial and you can put it to good use uh, in your future projects I'm Simon Bonner and I'll see you all again next time